Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hello, this is Dr. Nusheen Darvish. And hi, I'm Dr. Pat Basile, and you are listening to Lime Talk Radio. Uh, this is really very fascinating for uh, both Dr. Darvish and I for a lot of reasons. And we're going to give you a little snippet before we lunge into our show uh, that ha- that is all about celebrities coming out with Lyme disease. Uh, Dr. Darvish, let's talk a little bit about what has evolved, you know, since you and I decided to, to do this show on a regular basis. Um, Jessica did something really interesting. I asked her to go find the original shows that you and I did uh, back in 2006 and 2007. And last week, we talked about how the landscape of things have changed. What do you make of, of the recent, how should I say it, popularity of coverage with celebrities in, uh, uh, having Lyme disease and their battle with it? You know, I, I think uh, people have been demanding the information to be out there for people who are suffering with chronic conditions like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, Parkinson's, MS, they're demanding answers. And uh, what they're finding is that the Lyme disease may be the root of some of their conditions, and they're demanding information to be out there, to be known, to be publicly discussed. I mean, Dr. Oz has discussed Lyme disease. Uh, you hear it from um, on, the, on the news nowadays. You know, it's just all over the place, which is great, which is great because people have been in such denial. Doctors um, are politicians, um, have all been in such denial about this condition, even though some of them have been suffering from it, uh, but they don't want to bring it to the surface to discuss it. So I am glad. I am glad that it's coming to the surface. It is time. It is time for people to recognize it and know that there is things that they can do about it. Now, let's talk about this with Avril Lavigne. And we're going to start by going through, we're going to I'm hoping that we're going to get through as many of these folks uh, that we've been able to uh, look at that has come forth. We call it coming out, coming out with Lyme. And so Avril Lavigne, the latest, and she's been covered in People magazine. She's been on Good Morning America. Uh, but, but this is what I'm really struck by, Dr. Darvish. I'm going to read something. And had Avril Lavigne come to you or, or people like you, that have been so prominent in, you know, catching this, this would have been a different story. So she, Avril Lavigne talks about and opens up about, and it is a devastating disease. And there's a couple of stories that I'm going to share also about some people that are not celebrities. But she started to talk about this now has been in People magazine. You know, she said it wasn't exactly the way she imagined spending her 30th birthday. So she talks about going to Las Vegas, a couple of friends last October, celebrate the milestone. But she felt like doing anything but partying. In fact, she said she felt she felt terrible. She had been feeling terrible several months. Doctors that she had seen couldn't pinpoint exactly what was wrong. But here you go. I could barely eat. And when we went to the pool, I had to leave and go lie in bed. This is what she tells People's Magazine. My friends ask, what's wrong? She said, I didn't know. And shortly after, following a few months of lethargic and lightheaded, the normal energetic, really normal energetic, if you've heard any of her music, and Jessica's because going to play some of it during the break, um, got diagnosed. She had a severe, let's talk about this language, severe case of Lyme disease. Now, this is a Canadian singer. She's been recuperating in Ontario, Canada. She felt like she couldn't breathe, couldn't talk, couldn't move. She says, I thought I was dying. 
What do you think of that? You know, it's a really, really common symptom uh, or symptoms of people uh, people suffering with Lyme disease. They start off feeling, you know, sometimes it's just gradual onset of fatigue and uh, appetite changes, mood changes. But uh, in some people, it's almost overnight. They wake up and they can't move. They can't talk. Um, they can't feel and they can't communicate. And it's such a frustrating situation for them because they go from doctor to doctor just like she had and um, nobody knows what's going on with her. Yeah. And until, until, you know, by chance, they either come across a physician or they come across somebody who says, well, have you ever been tested for Lyme? Or they read something on the Internet and they think, oh, my gosh, my symptoms are exactly the same. And then they start uh, demanding their doctors to be tested for uh, Lyme disease. And sure enough, it comes out positive if they're lucky because some will not have a positive test. And I have had patients who have been tested for Lyme disease three times, four times, and it's been negative. And yet they have all the symptoms. And when they come to my office and uh, we decide to test them in other um, ways using, you know, bioenergy medicine or functional medicine testing, that they do come out positive with Lyme disease. So, you know, I think that if Alva Levine, the first initial signs of her symptoms were taken to a physician who was looking at her from a very holistic perspective, Mm -hmm. uh, both from a symptom perspective, the mental, emotional perspective, energetically, you know, from an energy perspective that they would have picked it up earlier. Yeah. It's not, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not. It's not an overnight, I mean, the symptoms may be overnight, but the process in that body has been going on for a long time before it it shows up its face like that. Let's talk about this, because this is why you and I do this show, right? You know, tell people what that means by the symptoms have been showing up in in someone's body long before that, because many people are looking at this, and we are not Lyme literate. Let's just be real clear here. We're not Lyme literate. Uh, and our vision in doing this show and the many other platforms where, you know, we have put out there is to help people understand this. But for somebody like Avril Levine, it sounds like I wake up one day. Actually, you know, you and I have talked about this. This is how it happens for some people. They're really good one day and the next they're not. But it doesn't mean that you have gotten bitten on that day, right? Exactly. It could have been months before. It could have been years before. A lot of people that come to see me, they may have had a tick bite or a mosquito bite when they were a child. And 30 years later, they're suffering from fatigue and uh, or they can't think. They've got this mental fog or they've got numbness or tingling in their fingers or they have a hard time walking or suddenly they've been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. I mean, there is a vast number of symptoms and a variety of different um, uh, conditions that can indicate Lyme disease, Bell's palsy. Mm -hmm. You know, most people don't recognize that Bell's palsy can be a symptom of Lyme disease. They get Bell's palsy, it lasts for a few Mm -hmm. days or a few weeks or a few months, it goes away, and they kind of, you know, throw it in the back corner and move on because they're better. But these kind of symptoms, uh, even just pure fatigue Mm -hmm. or flu-like symptoms or funny rashes that come and go can be just initial symptoms of um, an infection. and uh, But because at that time the immune system is relatively strong, um, they can fight it and move on until one day they go either through a mental or emotional stress, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or they go through a car accident or they have even something simple as dental cleaning or they have dental work done. They may even have surgery of some sort. Um, and the list goes on. Anything that's traumatic yeah. physically, mentally, or emotionally can set this off. Yeah. So um, they may get these, um, they may have had symptoms on and off for years and not paid attention to it, but then some trauma basically brings down the immune system and the symptoms come on full force. Okay. 
So let's talk about this for a minute. And then, you know, we'll talk about a, a few of these other folks if we could. You know, one of the things that I was struck by is uh, what has now become in the forefront of how Avril Lavigne talks about it. And why am I why am I focusing on her, Dr. Darvish? I'll tell you why. Because since she has started to talk about this, other people have come out. So here's what she says, right? She said, doctors told me I was crazy. Now, for those of us that are in, you know, the the profession of psychology in, in, in this world, we know that many people have said that that is what they are told, that whatever it is that's going on with them, the bottom line is you're pretty much losing your mind. And so she revealed that it took her eight months to get diagnosed properly. Doctors told her she was crazy, that the that her ailment did not exist. She finally was diagnosed, had no idea how she got the tick bite. How familiar does this sound? And then right after the same condition that came out, uh, the same condition for Yolanda Foster of The Real Housewives. And then I was at an event last year with Debbie Gibson. So now, Dr. Darvish, how many people do you know, not necessarily celebrities, have gone to doctor after doctor after doctor and have been told... uh, it's all in your head. You're crazy. Yeah. Well, she says, doctor told me I was crazy. Okay. That, that's the word. I mean, that's not even in your head. That's like telling, you know, one of the most prominent pop stars, rock stars we have out there that she's crazy. Well, you know, that's a common story I hear. Very common story. And in fact, I've had patients who have gone to some of the best infectious disease doctors in the country. And um, those doctors have not recognized their Lyme disease. And uh, even if the patient has asked to be tested, they've just, just told them, you don't have Lyme disease. It's in your head. You are mm-hmm. crazy. And, and you know, literally it is in their head because these spirochetes, as these uh, bacteria are, they're little, you know, spirals that mm-hmm. change shape. These things can borrow their, sel- the, their selves into cells into the nervous system, and um, in some cases make its way into the brain and cause, you know, pure havoc. It can cause distortion of mental thought. They can't think properly. They can't communicate properly. Uh, They can say things that are totally out of context. Emotionally, they can um, be crazy, (laughs) in a sense, mood swings, um, just a whole load of things. They they have visions. They can have hallucinations. I mean, the list can go on and on and on. So they, it can present itself in a very psycho psychological manner. And yet the bugs are really um, are the ones that are at the root of this distortion that's happening within their system. So well, it's a really it, common story. Sadly. It's a common story. And it's a sad one. You know, both of us want to acknowledge Avril Lavigne for what she has done. Um, and and so many others. And that's why we're doing this show today. For those of you out there that are watching this that may have a question mark around whether or not this was the case with the celebrity and other celebrities, for any of you out there that are thinking that this is a ploy for attention, please think again. It is not. This is real. You know, we're talking about someone who shared that she attempted to brush her teeth on a tour bus and couldn't stand up. She's talking about, you know, wanting to bring awareness to hopefully help other people. And she believes she will be okay in the long run. She says she's at 80%. And, you know, we commend her for all of that. Um, But, you know, part of this is really taking a look at what this journey is like for so many people. And thanks uh, to Avril Lavigne, true to herself, you know, she released a song the other day for her charity, the Special Olympics, and that song is called Fly. And many of us got to see it. uh, And she explained about what it means to overcome challenges. And so, you know, what is it that we know about this disease? And why is some of these folks that are more prominently visible coming out and speaking out? You know, what is it about a journey like this that all of us can learn from. You know, uh, Dr. Darvish, let's talk about a, a, a couple of other things as well. You know, there are there are people that have been diagnosed with Lyme disease. Um, most, most of them that, you know, we hear about 
uh, visit doctors and the doctors prescribe antibiotic treatment. Um, they're talking about prevention and awareness and, and definitely that is yeah, so important, so important. But there is so much out there right now that we don't know about. And let's talk about this, you know, for a minute. Let me give you a couple of a couple of scenarios and maybe we can you can jump in. You know, Jamie Lynn S- Sigler uh, came out not too long ago. She had contracted Lyme in 2000 and it was about her feet tingling. Eventually her legs became paralyzed. And, you know, when we hear about something like this, it's not a story quite like Avril Lavigne. Good news probably is Avril, Avril got some help early on. But here is a story of someone came out to the, the New Jersey Star Ledger and talked about this as a life-altering experience. She says, I realize it could all be taken away in a moment. And then it says she recovered completely, completely uh, after taking antibiotics. Now, I don't know. I, I don't know about that, and I don't necessarily want to talk about that, but I do want – Uh, I would love for you to comment on this idea of paralysis, from tingling to paralysis. Is that possible? It is possible, but it is, uh, you know, from a Western medical perspective, when uh, Lyme disease affects the nervous system causing paralysis or tingling uh, or both, that it's what we call the third stage. It's the end stage of Lyme disease. Initially, the stages... Um, the first stage typically is caused by flu-like symptoms, possibly a rash. Um, but, you know, how many people out there get flu-like symptoms and uh, think it's just the flu or a little virus that comes and goes and that's about it? Whereas um, you don't, you may not necessarily know that this is actually the beginning of something more dramatic mm-hmm. than just a virus. And so... Um, the second stage usually involves multiple joint pains, and these joint pains can go from one joint to the other. They're migratory, in other words. They travel from joint to joint. They're not in one joint all the time. And these pains and aches very commonly um, can range from just an ache to stiffness to full-blown you know, red and swollen and um, difficulty walking. And then as time goes by, by the way, fatigue also sets in somewhere between stage one and stage two. They really become tired. But somewhere uh, after stage two, um, and it's not recognized, you know, people just think, oh, I'm just a little bit stiff or I've just done too much workout today or I've been on my legs too much, what have you, that that stage can kind of pass by, people can improve, the symptoms kind of goes away, and then um, suddenly one day they do wake up feeling paralyzed. So it's not an overnight thing. This process has been going on for years again, but it wasn't recognized. Uh, those little symptoms that were like our yellow light signaling, hey, something's out of balance here in my body, was kind of pushed to the side, and um, the mental you know, wellness kept them going until one day they either physically or mentally or emotionally or all three were just totally uh, burnt out and the Lyme sets in in full blast into the nervous system and they wake up paralyzed. Mm. So it is a process. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about George W. Bush for a minute. And this I found one of the most interesting bits of information. Uh, and, you know, in the 2007 annual report, and boy, did this go right under the radar, Dr. Darvish, right? Yeah. Uh, 2007 annual report, you know, his president helped reveal that in August of 2006, you know, he had been treated for Lyme disease. And a White House spokesman came out and said, likely bitten during a bike ride, he noticed a rash that doctors treated, and he had no other symptoms or any other recurrence, according to CNN. Uh, it goes on to say, I from the you know the 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 doctor that treated him and the chief of infectious disease, Gary uh, Wormser, uh, that I wouldn't expect any problem at all for the president. I wouldn't expect any problem at all for the president. That's Gary Wormser, said chief of infectious disease at the New York Medical College and an expert on Lyme disease. That's what he told the Washington Post. He won't be impacted by this infection in the future. Okay. Um. <laughs> What what do you think about that? What, well, what do we now know? It's not 2006 or seven now, right? We are in 2015, going into 16. What have we discovered? 
Well, here's the funny thing. You say George W. Bush, and I'm I do. Look, and I'm looking back here. I just did a little Google search on him, and uh, what I'm finding is that he was uh, years ago. He was diagnosed with Graves' disease, and then glaucoma, and so it was one thing after the other, and. Um, you know, these these kind of little symptoms that seem like there's nothing, mm-hmm. that it actually can, again, be a symptom of a bigger thing. You know, they say that he had atrial fibrillation going on with the heart kind of goes yeah. funky and, you know, with the, with the heartbeat. Um, and Graves' disease is a thyroid issue. Yeah. It's hyperthyroidism which is an autoimmune disease, again, uh, like we've talked in the past with you, Dr. Pat, we've talked about autoimmune diseases being one of a symptom of Lyme disease, really, in many cases. So, you know, uh, if if he's had these symptoms kind of in different organ systems for years, for decades going on, and then finally, he's gone to a point where they did diagnose him with Lyme disease, that it's not an overnight treatment. It's not a quick fix. And if he doesn't really get on top of it in terms of facing the reality of what he is in for, if he doesn't address it, then he, he's, you know, he's going to be in, in big mm-hmm. trouble. So. But the, but the news, the good news is that if he does recognize and his doctors do recognize the severity of um, what Lyme can do to a person and what treatments are available out there to address people like him, that the, the future is good. The future mm-hmm. is fabulous. But you have to not be in denial. You have to recognize and you have to be proactive and you have to make drastic life changes in the way you are with yourself, in the way you are with people around you, in the way you are with food, in the way you are with your lifestyle, your exercise, your diet. Um, You know, basically meditation, lifestyle changes along with all these other Mm-hmm. Treatments such as addressing the immune system, such as addressing the hormonal imbalance that goes on, addressing the toxic load, whether it's it's a mental toxic load or a metal toxic load or chemical toxic load, whatever that is, addressing all of these very complex components of why the immune system in the first place went down to allow this infection to come to the surface. Because let's face it, you know, many of us are probably infected with this bacteria and many other bacteria similar to it. But why is it that two people can be bit by the same tick with the same infection and one gets very sick and the other one doesn't? Right. Why is that? Right. right. And right. it's and I always believe that it's a combination of your body's ability to detoxify uh, and your toxic load, what you came into this world with, your genetics, um, and uh, how you're living your life today. Well, you know, you know, let's talk about this because this is right on. You, you, let's go talk about some folks that uh, early on had a diagnosis and, you know, went through the journey that many people have gone through. Parker Posey is a perfect example, independent film actress. Uh, and, you know, she made the headlines because she had to withdraw from a lead role in what was at the time an upcoming playwright, uh, 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 you know, and uh, of uh, Horizons. And so she had to withdraw from this. And the reason she had to withdraw because, you know, she developed Lyme disease. And so, you know, this 40-year-old at the time, indie filmmaker, um, came out to talk about this, came out to talk about, you know, what it is that she wanted to say about this and what the journey was. And so she was one of the first, I think, Dr. Darvish, to come out and give another view. Uh, And so what she talked about was um, she kept a low f- profile, you know, as she battled Lyme disease. Now, this is pretty common for a lot of people. Um, and she had been going through so much. But then she let folks know that she abandoned or she moved away from traditional medicine. This is really what she came out and talked about to a holistic approach. And uh, I want to talk about this before we go to break and then also bring everybody to where we are with this conversation. 
Um, so what she goes on to say is she wants to use her experience to help others, and thank you for doing that. But, you know, those of uh, those of us that have come out to talk about taking holistic approaches, I mean, it's hard to get airtime for that. That's why Lime Talk Radio is changing that. And so now she uh, went out in support of a new documentary called Rethinking Cancer, and we can talk about that in a future show. But also she talks about Lyme disease, and she has dealt with this. She had an opportunity, Dr. Darvish, to both use conventional medicine, antibiotics, and homeopathic remedies and supplements, and that's what she talks about. And she goes on to say that the first round of antibiotics did not destroy the bacteria, and I made a decision not to take them anymore. Instead, approach it purely holistically. And so when we come back, we're going to talk about this, also the controversy around this film. But here's what it says about Posey and about the film. It raises the questions. How can a natural approach to healing oneself be considered so unconventional? Why do we think we can't play an active role in getting healthy? Why do we give ourselves away so easily? This is her to pharmaceuticals that deplete our system and confuse the natural healing process. When we come back, Dr. Darvish will weigh in on this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Please tell me I'm the one and only. Tired of traditional talk? People pontificating about this or that, the left or the right. Sometimes the truth is just all lost in the noise. Tune in each week to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher on TransformationTalkRadio.com, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, as nationally known guests talk about what's important to you, your life, your concerns, and your success. Tune in and turn on to Straight Talk with Chuck Gallagher. Visit ChuckGallagher.com for more information. Each month, listen to Live More Radio with co-host Ali Katz. Join Ali and Dr. Pat as Ali introduces new ways to bring balance back to your life through meditation, sleep, and exercise techniques so you can live your truly authentic life. Stress less, live more. To learn more about Ali, visit livemoreradio.com. Wondering how to make more confident strategy for retirement? Do you know that there are potentially more than 12 things to consider when planning for or approaching retirement? Then stop wondering and attend the retirement seminar hosted by Jeff Packman, financial advisor with Packman Brown and Associates, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated in Bellevue, Washington. Call 425-372-4813 for a formal invitation to the next seminar on November 5th from 630 to 8 p.m. Light hors d'oeuvres and beverages will be provided. This is an informational event. There is no cost or obligation. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Are you tired of being bloated and nauseous? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know eating unhealthy foods eventually leads to an unhealthy digestive system? Did you know eating the most healthy, nutritious food doesn't necessarily result in a healthy body? The stomach must be healthy in order to properly digest, metabolize, and utilize even the best of nutrition. Without proper digestion from the stomach through the intestinal tract, the nutritious value is not absorbed, and the improperly digested food can be more toxic to your body than helpful. You can be doing all the right things and getting all the wrong results. In fact, other organs may also be interfering with your stomach's ability to digest. With CRA, we are able to determine the specific cause of the digestive issue and use the proper nutrition to correct the imbalance. Contact us today for your appointment at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. Or visit us at maryjanemack.com. Doctor loves quickies. 
Mary's about ready to give love the shove, because no matter what she tries, guys don't know that she's alive. To turn guys on, she needs to turn on those green lights, nonverbal cues that say, over here. Most guys won't approach unless they're cleared for landing. So ladies, to kickstart your love life, turn on those green lights and flash your pearly whites. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf of AskDrLove.com. Naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie Deleuze has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie Deleuze wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie Deleuze at info at ronniedeleuzeonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie Deleuze, your partner in wellness. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lime Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Yeah, we're sidekicks. Uh, And actually, (laughs) we've been sidekicks in this conversation. We were just talking about it, you know, literally since 2006, as I recall. But that isn't the first time we talked about it. Um, It's the first time that I think that, you know, we came to the forefront to have conversations about Lyme disease, you know, in a world where probably you can count the number of people that were talking about chronic Lyme pretty much on one hand, maybe one hand and one foot, but times have changed and there's a reason that they're changing. You know, this is not a drive by disease anymore. Uh, As a matter of fact, Dr. Darvish, I understand that the CDC, again, has changed its numbers from 300,000 to a million. Now, I have to get some supporting information about that, but I believe that that is just the tip of the iceberg. Before the break, I shared a little information about Parker Posey and her her journey way back. What do you think of her decision? And, And, of course, the film that I'm referring to is Rethinking Cancer which tracks the experience of five patients, four with cancer and one with Lyme disease, who, t- who took to alternative means of treatment. But this is really was her conversation. Um, where are we with the state of affairs between conventional approaches and holistic approaches to Lyme disease from your perspective? You know, first of all, there's not that many physicians nationwide that treat Lyme disease from a holistic perspective. There is very few of us. Mind you, in Europe, many, many doctors in Europe treat Lyme disease from a holistic perspective. And what we need, uh, what we mean by holistic uh, perspective is really a medicine that combines Western, Eastern, natural, bioenergy medicine, anti-aging uh, medicine, functional medicine, really looking at the individual, not from the surface and treating um, <clears throat> symptoms, but delving into the depths of what the cause of these symptoms are. And I'm not just talking about Lyme disease as being a root cause. Um, That's one layer. Beyond that, there are usually more layers like dysfunctions in the family and um, in um, their genetics, in their detoxification factors, in their nutritional status. I mean, there's multiple patterns and uh, root causes that we can investigate and rebalance. So, you know, I I always like talking about balance because the body, when it's healthy, it's in in perfect homeostasis, in perfect balance. Little symptoms, little rashes, little migraines that show up, um, little numbness and tingling that can happen. The end of anything, any symptom, PMS, anything that you can think of, that may come up can be a signal of something out of balance in the body. And the body is really smart because it is able to often jump back and rebalance itself. And Mm -hmm. by doing that, those symptoms naturally go away. So it has inborn, we have inborn innate mechanisms that shift the body back to balance. It has to be back into balance if we want to continue surviving in this world. But when toxic loads overcome us, you know, when, when we're constantly exposed to chemicals or metals or um, in a home a situation where there is a lot of emotional toxicity or um, 
issues going on that over time the the body gets tired it just gets tired mm. of constantly getting back to balance and so it finds other ways of rebalancing itself because it has to and so in the from a german perspective from a european biological perspective mm-hmm. we look at infections as being there for a reason there's mm-hmm. a reason that yeast is there there's a reason that herpes virus is there there's a reason that lyme disease is there and and it is in order it sounds funny it it sounds counter counterintuitive but there is a reason these infections are there it's mainly because they are trying to rebalance something else that's been out of balance for a while. So when you look at a chronic condition like uh, Lyme uh, disease and its related uh, conditions, from a holistic perspective, we want to get delve into, get to the root of why it's there in the first place. And as we rebalance the body, the symptoms resolve on their own, the immune system wakes up and fights some of these infections because there's no longer a reason for that infection to be there. Now, depending on how long things have been going on, that this can be a very long-term process to go through all these layers of toxicities and and nutrient deficiencies and imbalances within the body. And it could be a very quick process um, you know, usually with children, for instance, who come down with Lyme disease, it's very quick to treat them. With adults who have not recognized their symptoms since childhood and now they're 40, 50, 60 years of age, it becomes a much more difficult and much more challenging way of uh, getting the system back to balance. But it doesn't mean that it can't go there. It just much more effort needs to be taken to take the body back into homeostasis. So well, I like the fact that he, she is, you know, I, I, antibiotics are not mm-hmm. the uh, only answer. In right. fact, um, antibiotics can often throw another system out of balance mm-hmm. and um, cause more havoc in the body. It's funny because antibiotics is really, I think, a misnomer. People think antibiotics, which means anti-biological, you know, infections, for instance, right. that you've completely stopping that infection. Well, if you go through what antibiotics, most antibiotics do is that they don't really stop the infection. They just suppress them. Mm. And so that suppression continues, that infection continues and then flourishes into something else later on because we've kind of stopped the uh, doorway for that infection And we've kind of closed that door and said, you know, shut up and go back. (laughs) And so the infection goes back. But it says, well, you know what? I need to show my face because there is an imbalance here. I need to balance this out still. So it finds some other way of rebalancing itself. And it it finds, you know, the nervous system in this case, for instance. And then you end up with paralysis. Well, you know, let's talk about someone else now from from. From my generation, you know, we're familiar with Daryl Hall and, you know, Hall and Oaks, of course. But, you know, another scenario had to pull out of a gig uh, and he talked about Lyme disease. And he says why he is ticked off uh, by the local deer population. But you know what? It's more than that. Um, it's it's a deer population. And in contrast to a very small population of people that know how to even begin to work with this. So he talks about the fact that he was diagnosed and he said same symptoms, but this is a little different. This is kind of tricky. You know, he talks about symptoms that look like allergies, right? You know, he used to feel feverish. He would take his temperature sometimes and it was below normal, then a little above normal. And he started to think this is strange. Uh, And so again, allergies now, I have done a show recently and have talked to people about the rise in allergies and allergic reaction. And so he went out and he talks about being allergic to things like celery and so forth. And then one day he got a really high fever and his neck stiffened up, aches and pains, got really bad tremors, didn't know what it was, you know, went for tests. 
Uh, and then he comes out and says it was a tick disease, came up in the initial test result, but he was fortunate for that. And then he learned he had six or seven tick-borne diseases. So let's talk about this misconception. Get bit by the tick, I got the disease. No, that's just the beginning. That's the tip of the iceberg, isn't it? Definitely. And, you know, you talk about allergies. Allergies are actually a good thing in a way because your body is giving you that signal, that yellow signal saying, hey, something's not right here. So check it out. Whereas, you know, we've been used to taking an antihistamine pill and Claritin or what have you and saying, you know, I can't deal with this allergies. I just need to go on with my day. Let's shut down my symptoms. I can't deal with this itchy eyes and sore, uh, itchy throat and sore throat and runny nose. And let's just shut it down and move on. And, or, and it can be something as uh, dramatic as having abdominal symptoms to foods. And those are allergy reactions as well. But these are all signals that say, hey, something's not right. Check Mm. into it, right? But what's interesting also is that if we don't pay attention to these uh, really superficial symptoms, that over time they do become a much bigger deal later because the body finally gets tired of of, uh, discharging. And it it gradually goes into a, a position where it causes more inflammation and degeneration. Mm-hmm. It, there's actually a shift in the immune system that happens from an immune system that's called humoral to an immune system that's got um, is a more cellular uh, immune system function. And the cellular ones are always the big ones. They're the ones that are trying to deal with the cancers. They're the ones that are trying to deal with osteoporosis or arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or Crohn's disease. These are the deeper immune um, reactions that are going on that that the body is not able to discharge as much because it's passed way past mm-hmm. that level. And so it gets to a point where it no longer can deal with it and it causes degeneration. And over time, this degeneration and weakness can lead to cancer. But what's interesting is that as patients start healing from that cellular immune response, yeah. when, they, when they start healing from that arthritis, the autoimmune diseases, or they start healing from that colitis or Crohn's disease or the migraines, that gradually the symptoms of allergies come back. And it's wow. because the, the, the body's immune system is no longer weighed down by dealing with this chronic, heavy-duty condition like the Lyme infections or the really heavy-duty um, viruses and parasites that now it's needing to deal with the more superficial symptoms like reacting to the pollen outside or having a virus that, you know, a simple cold virus. So whenever people get start getting sick, you know, with little colds and flus, and and they say, you know, I haven't been sick for 10 years, and I haven't Mm -hmm. had allergies, and suddenly I'm getting allergies. And they were dealing with a much chronic condition that I tell them this is a really great thing because your body is finally waking up, your immune system is finally waking up, and now it's dealing with these superficial uh, symptoms, conditions, whereas before it was so bogged down with the heavy-duty um, infections and degenerative conditions going on in the in the system. Well, you know, this is the thing that uh, I want to just, you know, mention and, and kind of, you know, lead into the next topic. You know, he goes on to say it was really kind of cool because I love, I, it's not cool he has Lyme disease, but it's cool the way he approached it. You know, his first reaction was, because he didn't know any better, he says, he says, I remember thinking, okay, now what do I have to do? I have, I have Lyme disease. You know, that doesn't sound so serious. Now I just need to get rid of it. And then he goes on to say, let me tell you, I have no idea. And he goes on to talk about the fact he went online, he researched got a doctor who apparently was one of the best in the field, gave him the proper test, and then uh, gave him the insight about what his future was going to be like. And he says, to be honest, and this is really, you know, the place that I get involved in help people, he said it was all pretty depressing. Well, it is depressing, and folks don't know what to do with the emotional, psychological aspect of this. Um, He then goes on to say he would see some of the patients in the waiting room and Dr. Darvish, this really does sum it all. And he says what he saw was nightmarish. There were people that were crying, screaming. Their hair was falling out, all sorts of stuff. He says what I was seeing in those people 
were the worst case scenario of this disease, and it was scary. Um, and he goes on to talk about what this healing was like. And he talks about how difficult it was, but he got this thing he calls a Herxheimer reaction. And I think this is what you were talking about. And I know that we're going to continue this conversation in part two of this. But there is a healing journey and things might get worse in some cases, but not really worse. But it may feel like that before it gets better. Is that what he's talking about? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So some people, especially if you were addressing the root of what's going on, that um, many people do get what's called a Herx reaction or Herxheimer's reaction. And it's typically flu-like symptoms. You know, you may get a little nauseous, feverish. Uh, some people, people get really nauseous. Um, and they may get chills and fever and achy and fatigued. And again, it's not the bacteria, it's the immune system's response to the bacteria. So what we're doing is we're waking up the immune system, and that is a good thing. Now, I don't like having people feel so sick um, so intensely for so long. So I do help the, support their system in the process so that they don't necessarily go through an intense Herx reaction, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a gradual shift that happens uh, by supporting them in their immune function and detoxification pathways, the, the body can minimize the Herx reaction. You know, the Herx reaction is really a, a signal like you've got too much toxins that are mm -hmm. dying off. Infections, as they die off, they release these toxins. And the body has to eliminate these toxins. If the body doesn't eliminate them, it, it seems like, it feels like another, you know, enemy has entered the body. Yeah. And that's why the fever goes up and the immune system starts reacting. You want to vomit, you get nauseous, you may get diarrhea. And these are all symptoms of trying to eliminate those toxins. So if we can optimize, and when we do optimize the patient's um, detoxification pathways, then they feel much better. They're, they're able to eliminate these toxins that are getting released from these infections. And um, they don't have the Herx reactions as much. So I do take the Herx symptoms as a signal of something else being a little bit out of sync, like the uh, detoxification pathways not being open. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot more we're going to be talking about. One of the things that I love about this, and I'm going to wrap this up with, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, what uh, actually, you know, what uh, Daryl Hall actually says about this. And this is really the cry of so many people right now, Dr. Darvish. This is really the cry. You know, he he goes on to talk about um, what this really means you know, what this really means in the world we live in today. And he talks about that, you know, Lyme disease is something you start to learn with. Uh, but he but he then goes on and talks about the fact that he doesn't really understand why the CDC, why the medical profession, why this is not a disease that people are willing to say is a disease. So our listeners that may be hearing the show, they think Lyme disease. Oh, Avril Lavigne came out and said she had Lyme disease, chronic Lyme disease, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and folks think, okay, what's the problem? If it is a disease, insurance should pay. Uh, if it is a disease, it should be a recognized disease, chronic Lyme disease. Uh, if it is a disease, this should be a no-brainer conversation. Tests should be available. They should be paid for by insurance companies. Children should be protected. He goes on to say, I don't really understand why the CDC has not recognized it, and nobody has ever given me an answer that satisfies me as to why this has not really been addressed or recognized. Everyone who suffers from Lyme disease is sort of on their own. Now, that is a sad state of affairs. That was the case when you and I first did a show about this uh, almost a decade ago, and it's still the case, isn't it? But we are making some progress, aren't we? We sure, we sure are. And, you know, the answer to that question, I, I don't know either. I mean, all we can do is speculate. Um, part of one of the issues is our medical training. Our medical training is, and um, treatments is really based on emergency medicine. It's based on acute conditions. And very little 
is taught about chronic diseases, pharmaceutical medications are in large part not effective for chronic conditions. They very much suppress symptoms. So we're not addressing the root cause. So really the the doctors who are rising to deal with these chronic conditions are really the naturopathic physicians, the licensed naturopathic physicians across the country who are working very hard to bring forward the whole holistic perspective of of chronic conditions like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, Parkinson's, which, you know, at its root is Lyme disease and other multiple um, conditions. But the Western medicine has not been trained that way. And so not, not that the Western medicine is not needed. Of course, it's very much needed in emergency situations, but the recognition of naturopathic physicians and holistic physicians also needs to be made in order for uh, health to um, become great for everyone, you know, in order for Lyme disease to be ac- acknowledged and accepted, chronic Lyme disease, not acute Lyme disease. So it is a journey that we as humans have uh, embarked on, and I am sure, positive, that we will all come out of this in a really fantastic and much better place. Um, yeah. in a much better way than we ever even thought. This is only a blip that we need to take on in order to learn from and to grow and to progress as human beings. Wow. You know, thank you so much, Dr. Darvish. And Dr. Darvish and I, we're really thrilled to be bringing you Lime Talk Radio. Um, it is a, you know, it's a format that she and I have had for years in bringing a level of awareness to something that, you know, even even back in 2004, when we were looking at this, we had no real idea of what the implications were. You know, now, Dr. Darvish, we're really looking at, you know, forms of this that are killing people immediately, if not shortly thereafter the bite. And so this is really the world where both you and I have a commitment and dedication to bring a level of awareness and really talk about the things that many people would say are controversial. Because I know your commitment to this and I know mine. And I want to thank you for all that you do and thank you for your involvement. I know you just uh, have recently had an appointment in the Lyme community. Maybe you should talk a little bit about that. Well, I'm I'm actually one of the board members um, now, um, not a, a board member for the ILADS, the International Lyme yep. Association, and um, this is really mostly open to the um, medical doctors nationwide. So, for the first time in the last year, they have accepted me, and I believe there's maybe one or uh, one or two other naturopathic physicians who are um, allowed to be members now of this ILADS. Um, so the awareness is definitely coming to a head, which is really great, great for both the medical community and for the holistic community. But I wanted to share something before we close. You know, this is a really... Um, a really favorite quote of mine, and it's one of the quotes that I uh, touched me so hard about 25, 30 years ago in order for me to go into this type of medicine and to do what we do. And it's a Baha'i quote. It says, it is therefore evident that it is possible to cure by foods, ailments, and fruits. But as today the science of medicine is still in its infancy, once man has learned to uh, profit from holistic medicine that from and living from living um, as slaves to their lustful appetites. Now, mind you, I am just paraphrasing here. I'm not reading mm-hmm. off the quote. So once human, humanity has recognized that they are slaves to their lustful appetites, lustful, they say, lustful appetites, and overcome their lustful appetites. And you can think about lustful appetites in many different ways. It's not just food. It's our lustful appetites and the way we lead our lives, you know, the cravings that we had for all sorts of addictions and so forth. But once we overcome our lustful appetites, that there will be no chronic disease in this world, no Mm. chronic disease. Mm. You know, so this is one thing that we really all need to work upon is thinking and looking at our own selves and seeing 
is this my action and what I'm doing? Is this a lustful? Is mm-hmm. is it buying into this lustful appetite of mine? Wow. And if it is, then we need to shift that in order to prevent chronic illness. Wow. Dr. Nusheen Darvish, I'm Dr. Pat Basile. We plan to bring you the most relevant and, as a matter of fact, transformative conversations on the state of affairs and Lyme disease, personal stories, uh, solutions, information, and much more. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. We'll see you next time.